Hey everybody, I'm Garrick Usher. Welcome back to Life Love LARP. Today we're going to talk a little bit about broken weapons, what to do with them, how to reinforce them, that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> All right, weapons break. It's a fact of the game. You're out in the field, you're in the moment, you're hitting somebody, somebody's hitting you, you're turning, you're dodging, you're jumping, all of a sudden your ax hooks on a tree branch and rips. You're in a battle, you're fighting, you got a sword, you pull up, you block, you hook, you turn around, somebody's hand goes through and rips off your cross guard. These things happen all the time. Latex weapons are not made to thrust, but let's face it, sometimes the tips get ripped off. Unfortunately, when it comes to swords, most of the time when somebody comes to me with a repair and says, hey, can you fix this? If it's the tip that's broken off, I'm gonna have to redo the whole blade right from the pommel and handle all the way up to, from the cross guard. Um, there's just no way around it. It's really difficult to repair a foam sword tip and get it to look like it hasn't been broken or fixed. Um, obviously with uh, you know basket guards and that kind of thing, we can re-glue them and uh, you know make the best of it, but uh, generally it's gonna take some more uh, construction. It's gonna take some uh, reinforcement. Um, axes, again, are another thing. You know, this axe broke uh, a couple of times. When I originally made this one, I used Kevlar in the hook to reinforce it. Um, since then, I've come up with some uh, uh, new techniques. I first reinforced just this much of it, and of course, it ripped right there, so I had to rebuild it. I then figured, oh, I'm gonna reinforce it all the way up to the end of the hook, where the beard drops down. And sure enough, that's where it ripped. This part is good and solid, but it tore right here. So next time when I rebuild this ax, I'm gonna do it and I'm going to make it reinforced all the way around so that it is um, strong enough to withstand the any hooking damage. Today, I'm gonna to show you what I do for staves. Now, this was an accident that was actually somewhat my fault. We're in the heat of the moment, we're in a dungeon. Um, a guy comes up to me, I'm, I'm crewing at the moment, I'm not playing a character. And he's, uh, you know, trying to back me off with the staff, and he's stabbing and stabbing and stabbing. And I reached out, and as I tried to brush it to the side, I grabbed onto it and pulled the tip off. Now I felt terrible. I'm like, dude, I'm going to fix this for you. I don't believe in apologies. An apology puts, if I say, hey man, sorry I broke your staff, it's putting the onus on you and the responsibility on you to forgive me and say, oh dude, it's all right, I forgive you. You know, I, I, I'll get it fixed or I'll take it back to the guy, whatever. But if I say to you, hey man, I'm sorry I broke your staff, let me fix it. I feel bad that it happened. Um, then I'm taking responsibility and ownership. But uh, anyway, that's just a little life coach thing for uh, for myself and my own personal values. So when I got this home and uh, opened it up and peeled off some of the plastic dip, uh, this is a homemade weapon, so the fellow that made it is actually coming to pick it up today, so I wanna get this video done. Um, and uh, so I took the plastic dip off uh, about this far to get to where the damage is, and I found that it ripped right at the end of the core. He did a great job of reinforcing the tip so the core wouldn't push through, but as foam gets poked and pushed and, and you're, you know, you're putting your staff on the ground, leaning on it at, at, at any pressure at all, um, what happens is that foam breaks down as the, where the core meets it. So it's really easy for it to rip off this way. So I peeled it off and I looked at the other end and I realized that the other end was also ripped pretty much right through. Now this one I was able to inject glue in there and uh, um, re uh, fix that and it's not too bad, but I'm going to add some extra support on there. Now one of the things that I've seen in some historical staffs is um, that sometimes you'll, and, and uh, LARP staffs, is you'll have a band of metal around there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce this with a little bit of leather and then foam over top to make sure that that uh, has some longevity to it. And uh, yeah, so let's go. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, uh, I just have some scrap uh, veggie tan leather. It's uh, nothing special. Um, I think I actually got this in a thrift store. They didn't know what they had, and I think I paid, I got a bunch of black, a bunch of veggie tan, uh, two different types of black and, and veggie tan. I think I got the whole, like, garbage bag full for like 10 bucks because it was just scrap leather. Uh, if I were to go to Tandy Leather, it would have been like 200 bucks. But, uh, yeah, so I picked this up. And um, I've been using it for a number of different projects. Now, Veggie Tan leather is going to have um, a lot of different thicknesses to it. It's not all going to be perfectly the same thickness. So you want to find uh, a part of it that is going to have the most flexibility. Um, this is actually quite rigid, and I would use this for uh, some other kind of reinforcement. Um, but because this is going to be on somewhat of a striking surface, you want to find the most soft and flexible piece um, of the leather, leather that you have, which I think is going to be right in around this area. So I'm just going to take my razor blade and cut that off. Um, actually, I think this is right about the right size. So if I take this piece and wrap it around, basically what I want to do is I want to reinforce it about an inch on either side of where it broke. Uh, so this is right about the si right size that I need. So I'll just use that as a pattern to find myself in the softest piece that I can find right about there. Perfect. Um, leather's great because you don't, uh, you can just lay it on the table if you have a good work table that you're not worried about cutting and you can just drag your knife and cut it. This doesn't have to be ex exact, it's not gonna it doesn't have to look pretty. It's uh, all going to get covered up anyway. In this case, it's going to get covered up with foam and uh, Plasti Dip, so nobody's ever going to see it. Um, often my reinforcements in my weapons are just covered with latex. As you can see with this axe that I've been working on here, it's all reinforced in the crook. Um, it's just quite a bit thicker uh, and more rigid foam than I used in that other axe, so I wasn't too worried about reinforcing it all the way up. Um, plus, I know the player that's going to be using it, and she's going to be fairly gentle on it anyway. But all, all my axes and any of my uh, cross guards are always reinforced with leather to uh, some degree. I actually learned this tip from the Michelangelo of foam crafting. Um, a guy named Luca Sabatini, he owns a company called BC Expors in Italy, and uh, I was talking with him on Facebook and uh, he told me how he reinforces axes. His biggest problem is that um, people complain that his axes and many of his weapons are, are too good, <laughs> if, that, if that can be a problem, and they will actually um, other weapons won't hold up to them and can become damaged. So I'm just going to fold that over and so I can mark off where the exact I want the exact seam to be. The nice thing about uh, leather is when I get it glued on, I found it to be very sandable. So if I have a little bit of overlap, I can just take my Dremel and uh, clean that up with my sanding bit. I'm also in a bit of a rush here because I've got a LARP event tonight. I'm going to a tavern for the a tavern event, which is technically an unofficial event, but basically we all just get together, sit around, have a few drinks, all in character um, from the main LARP that I run. And uh, it is a ton of fun. If you're part of a local LARP, I would strongly recommend you try to set up some, you know, social events outside of the main LARP. Most LARPs meet like, you know, once a month or once every two months or whatever, and some are lucky and they can do it every week. But um, yeah, if you can set up like some kind of tavern event where you can all just get together socially and, you know, hang out in character and not really play. We don't run any mechanics. We don't have any combat at our tavern events. We just do a little buying and selling and trading of goods and, and uh, you know, flirting, philandering, and, you um, you know, socializing with our friends in character it is absolutely a blast. One of the highlights of my month, for sure, is the tavern events. So once you have your piece of leather measured out and uh, ready, we're just going to glue that on there with a little bit of 
contact cement. Um, if you're using barges or um, whatever, they all kind of work the same. Give it a nice coating. Make sure you're getting the whole surface where your glue is going to attach. And then I've found that it doesn't really matter if I put the glue on the more shiny side of the leather or the more rough. Um, it uh, soaks into the leather quite nicely and creates a great bond. Now you might, the risk is with doing a weapon like this is sometimes leather can get a little bit rigid as it glues into place and that might not be super contact safe depending on the co combat rules of your LARP. So you want to test it first and make sure that you're you know, making a weapon that's going to be safe. I'm one of the uh, safety marshals at our game. I've personally found this technique to work great um, in some of the other products that I've made and, and, and tested out around the house. So uh, yeah, but different LARPs have different safety marshals and different rules. So I'll just let this tack up and we'll stick it together. And bam, here we go. Exciting things have happened. I've made myself a cup of coffee. Mmm, love coffee. And I've got uh, both sides glued up and ready to go. So I'm going to take my first strip of leather. I threw a second coat of glue on there just to be uh, make sure I had had enough. I'm actually going to let that dry up just a little bit more and uh, I'll use my magic fan. Okay, that's dry enough. Of course, due to magic, that actually was about 10 minutes, but that's okay. When I'm, at, when I'm putting my pressure on and applying my glue, I always make sure I squeeze it really well just to get really good contact. This particular work, I don't want any overlap. So I'm just gonna cut that off right there. Grab some scissors. And uh, just snip that off so it's flush. Sometimes I'm fine with overlap. This particular time I don't want any. There we go, that's a little better. Put that around, glue the other end. Now you notice I didn't remove the plasti dip on this end. I just feel that it'll be uh, totally fine gluing to the plasti dip. The plasti dip gets a really good adherence to the material to the foam material, so it creates a good seal. There we go. Now on this end I got a little bit of an overlap, so I'm just going to knock that down a bit with my Dremel tool. Now I got not, lots of leather in my delicious coffee. Mmm, leather coffee. Ah, nectar of the gods, that stuff. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put some foam over this. Um, when I paint this up, I just don't want it to feel too hard or, you know, um, to really look unusual. So I want it to be consistent with the rest of the weapon. Um, so I'm just going to grab some scraps out of my bin. There we go, just to give it a little bit of a wrap over that leather. Again, I'm going to mark it. Now 
Now I want to get it so it's going to match up really nice. And then I'm going to heat it up and give a good curve with it. There we go, that'll be perfect. Need my heat gun. Dang. Ah, there we go. That was easy. Again, I want to get it so it matches up just perfectly so when I glue it, I can stick it together nice and tight. It's going to look great. I'm actually going to take a little bit more off that. Having a good sharp razor blade really helps with this kind of work. If we do end up with a little bit of gap, of course I can fill that, but Awesome. So that's going to be that side. So I'm going to glue these and um, stick them on separately. I'm going to do one at a time. That would just help me stay a little bit more focused. I'm not even going to cut or curve the other side yet. But uh, so now I can see here I've got basically quarter inch on either end of the leather just to give it a good bond to the foam as well. Open it up, hit it with my contact cement. This is a genius idea, by the way. Typical water bottle, poke four holes in the end of it with a pin, pour your glue inside, and you've got an instant applicator for your glue. It never dries out. This glue I've had in here, this is like maybe, I think I filled this a couple months ago, and it's been sitting in my shop all winter and, and all you do is you just peel off a little film that uh, forms when it dries right there and boom fresh applicator lots of control very little mess because let's face it this stuff gets sticky make sure you hit your ends as well because we want those to seal to one another um, i always do my holes in a straight line so i have better control i don't do like a bunch of holes uh, like a salt and pepper shaker I just do a straight line and it gives me a bit more control. Excellent. Make sure that's wiped off there. Wipe off the excess. Let that dry. The magic of time. I'm going to be trying and reviewing a new glue soon. I just got to get my hands on it. It's actually an upholstery glue. A little different than barge. Apparently it's just absolutely fantastic. Good uh, friend and cosplayer uh, here in the lower mainland of Vancouver. Uses it exclusively and is amazing. So let's use the magic. God love magic. Mages unite. So I'm going to pull this nice and tight. Wrap that so it matches up really good. And then we're just going to squeeze that all on there. So I've got a little bit of a seam to fill there, but very little.
There we go. I'm gonna put lots of pressure on it, help that glue get a really good contact. So I'm just gonna hit that with my Dremel and shape that up a bit, and uh, there we go. There we go. So that gives it a little bit more of a, a rounded edge, a little bit more of a look. Now I don't worry too much when I'm doing metal bands and that kind of thing to get everything perfect. So when I think of medieval craftsmanship and blacksmithing in small villages and small towns, it would be very rare to have a master blacksmith. So unless you're making something that is of a really elite quality, chances are it's going to be hand hammered, roughed in, made by the same guy that would be making horseshoes for your farm. So I'm going to leave this looking a little bit rough. Um, I'm going to put a texture on it that's going to make it uh, look like it's hand hammered. And um, do I want to do studs? No, I'm not going to do studs. Uh, I was thinking of maybe doing you know studs all the way around like I did on my last uh, cudgel that I made looked really awesome um, but for this I'm just gonna do the metal band and uh, but I want to texture that up a bit just to give it a little bit more um, a little bit more character and a little bit more of an interesting look let's get my thermograph Pop. okay so this is what I call my thermograph. Um, it's, it's kind of part of a wood burning kit. You can get them at Michael's or a lot of craft stores. Uh, this particular one has a dial on it so you can control the temperature, um, turning it up and down, getting it just right. I usually leave mine at about 80, 75% and it comes with a bunch of little nibs. These little nibs have a, you know, a little leaf uh, shape. There's some that have like kind of you know, different things, flat things, a hot blade, um, and they basically just thread into the end of the soldering iron type device. It's a little bit shorter um, in uh, the uh, end bit than a soldering iron, which gives you a little bit more control. Now this one I had for about two years, a uh, year and a half or so, and the tip just kind of broke off, you can see there. So I just took it on my sander and made it round, because round tip is something that I need and didn't have. Um, I've been meaning to buy another one, but I haven't got around to it. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting little hammer marks in there. Just need to put my ventilation fan on. And I just go around like this, and I just keep hammering on it and tapping on it until it has a nice consistent look. Then what happens when you put silver paint on this, it comes out to a really nice finish. I usually do a two, uh, two coat process. I'll put black on it first, then I'll put silver, and then I hit it with a little bit more black and do a dry rub. So I'll put the black on and then wipe it all off and it just stays in the, in the deeper spots and the gaps and the cracks. Gives it a really nice aged and weathered look. I think this thermograph was about 25 bucks, maybe 30 bucks at Michael's. You can experiment around and do like little swirls and stuff too, just to kind of give it a bit of a different texture. Of course, or you could just leave it flat because sometimes steel is just wrapped around. Or in this case, it'd be more of a, probably an iron, considering the age of the, the games that he's using this in. Now, if I were to paint this white, it would look like a big marshmallow. And that would be stupid. Sometimes stupid is fun, but in this case, I'm not going for stupid. Boom. 
So there we have that. That's gonna have a really nice finish on it when it's done. Much more sturdy end to it. Um, reinforce that leather is gonna hold it really nice and strong and it'll be ready to go. I'm gonna do the other end really quickly and hopefully my customer um, slash friend, it's not really a customer, um, doesn't show up before I'm done. All right, that was nice and quick. Look at that, bam, both ends done. So now I'm not gonna be doing the painting on this. He's gonna do the painting himself, which is fine. I'll just explain to him when he gets here how to, uh, what colors to use and that kind of thing to make it look uh, popping. <sighs> Gotta admit, that was pretty easy. This whole repair, uh, not including the, you know, gluing the tips that I put on, that took maybe about 10, 15 minutes. Um, this whole repair, including adding the foam, the leather, actually took me around maybe 20 minutes, not including drying time um, and uh, waiting for the glue to dry. So it's really quick, really easy. This is gonna be nice and strong. I have my doubts that it's gonna rip off again. Once it's painted up, it's gonna look great. So I hope that's helpful. Um, it's certainly a cheap and easy way to do things. And uh, he doesn't have to rebuild the whole staff to make sure that foam has the integrity to, uh, to last through a few more battles. So yeah, have a great day. I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button, the like button, share it with your friends, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, let's make some stuff because making stuff is fun and it's not that hard. See ya.